So, just like the video we made yesterday talking about Colin White and the Montreal Canadiens rumors that popped themselves up over there, we're going over to 32 Thoughts, the recent piece published by Elliot Friedman immediately after the trade deadline. This is the same article from a few days ago, 32 Thoughts of Guinea Dadanov and the Trade Deadline Fallout. The link will be in the description if you want to go ahead and read this piece. Because I am on a trip this entire weekend, I have to pre-record some stuff, which is why video topics like these are getting spread across through several days. And for me, sitting here in my bedroom, it's Friday, March 25th, as I record this audio, 12, 18 a.m. in the morning. It's a lot easier for me to schedule out the show when we go over topics in this sort of format. So... As we did with Colin White, we're going over on to 32 Thoughts, link in the description as always, and if we take a look at the thought that immediately proceeds that Colin White Montreal thing, it is thought number seven. There is no guarantee it happens, Elliot Friedman writes, but I do believe that Claude Giroux is doing his research on the Ottawa Senators. Now, this isn't a new thing, the idea of Claude Giroux potentially taking his services and his talent over to Pierre Dorian and his band of goons. There have indeed been videos that we've made talking about how Giroux might be interested in Ottawa, how Ottawa might be interested in Giroux, and all this stuff, but just for the rundown, if you're not aware of how things work around here, Claude Giroux is a very good hockey player. He's been one of the best of the past decade and a bit, and he just recently got traded to the Florida Panthers after a long-tenured career with the Philadelphia Flyers. He was the captain of this team for almost a full decade. I think 2012 was his first season as the captain for Philly. So yeah, that was a decade ago. And now as a Florida Panther, he's finishing off the rest of his contract with a stacked playoff contender before likely taking his services elsewhere around the league. Whether or not he returns to Philadelphia remains to be seen. Whether or not he sticks around in Florida or decides to go somewhere else, that remains to be seen as well. For now, Claude Giroux himself and the Claude Giroux fan club that definitely does exist in Philadelphia, everybody is just kind of looking at what he does now. Does he win a cup? Does he hand off the Stanley Cup to Joe Thornton? Because you know those two are on the same team now for some reason. That's very strange to think about. Do you see Claude Giroux winning a Stanley Cup? That's what everybody cares about right now, but there is a conversation as to what happens next. Because Claude Giroux grew up as an Ottawa Senators fan, there is an entire idea saying that this guy might be in the crosshairs for some Ottawa team in the future. If he is indeed doing his research about them now, according to Elliot Friedman, then it kind of goes out there and validates all the other conversations we have had over the past calendar year as to whether or not Giroux firstly could be traded to Ottawa, which didn't happen, thankfully, because I don't want to see Pierre Dorian going out there making a trade with Chuck Fletcher. That would just be pandemonium in all respects. But there is the idea that says Claude Giroux as a free agent for 2022 might take his talents to his favorite team growing up. Now, why exactly would the Ottawa Senators want to do this? Why would they want to take on an aging veteran player who has had so much accomplished throughout the NHL? If he wins a Stanley Cup this season, there's really nothing else that he would realistically have a shot at accomplishing. Because, let's face it, even though he hasn't won any hardware, he hasn't won the Art Ross, he hasn't won a Hart Trophy, he hasn't won all this stuff, he still is an all-star player in the NHL. He has gotten World Championship gold, he's gotten World Junior gold and World Cup gold. There's a lot of gold going around here for Claude Giroux, plus the 100-point season he had, this and that. He's had a storied career. Why would the Sens want to go out there and do that? Aren't they a bad team? Well, firstly, if you have yourselves a superstar that wants to sign with you, there's no way you go out there and turn that guy down. I don't care if you're a good team, a bad team, basement team, whatever. If there is a guy that is this good, somebody who is this established in the NHL lore, and somebody who probably should be a Hall of Famer, at least if his team was just a tad better and he had a little bit more hardware under his belt, he probably would have been a guaranteed first ballot Hall of Famer. When you have somebody like that who is saying, okay, I want to go here. I want to sign with you, Pierre. I want to go on your team. You say yes to that guy. I don't care if the guy is 40 years old. If he wants to go to you, you respect these players. And if you don't have a spot for them, you don't have any appropriate placement for them in your lineup, you make that spot. Because if you're ultimately in the business of making a hockey team that sells tickets, puts fans in seats, and gets people buying beer and hot dogs at the concession every period intermission, you get guys like these on your team. You get stars like these. When they want to be here, you make way. 
And so, for Claude Giroux, that's one aspect of it. He's Claude freaking Giroux. He gets what he wants. That's why he got traded to Florida, because that's the only team he apparently wanted to go to that actually was in the running of conversing with the Philadelphia Flyers for a trade. But there also is another reason that I think the Ottawa Senators would be more than happy to welcome Claude Giroux to their team. Mostly because... We've seen what Pierre Dorian wants this team to become, right? We saw the media presser, we heard what he had to say about the team, and if this is really gonna be, like, this as in, like, 21-22, if this is the last year that Ottawa is a seller, you'd probably think that Pierre Dorian would be trying to make more of these moves to help them along in the short term. It's why they traded away a third-round pick for Travis Hamanick, because they felt that that guy, for next season at least, would help them out in getting out of the basement and becoming an actually good hockey team that competes for a wild card and is in the race and is not a seller anymore, because the Ottawa Senators, oh boy, don't get Pierre Dorian wrong, man, they're not sellers. And so, when it comes to that, and I start thinking about what a team like Ottawa can do, ay ay ay. This team, I don't think it would be unrealistic to say, what's the likelihood that they go out there on a shopping spree and they just spend a whole bunch of money on all these big-name free agents trying to lure them to Ottawa? You know, the meme is that Eugene Melnick does not like paying his players, and whenever players get too expensive on their contracts, that's when they get shipped away. But if it's free agency and if there's an opportunity to get somebody like a Claude Giroux on your team, that leadership, that mentorship, that experience, hopefully he wins a Stanley Cup, and Florida gets the Stanley Cup for three years in a row, imagine that, Tampa, Tampa, and then Florida, that's wild. But if Claude Giroux wins a Stanley Cup, all of a sudden there's a Stanley Cup pedigree there, and I feel like with the entire connections and everything, it's a lot easier for Eugene Melnick to think about shelling money out for Claude Giroux than it would have been for any other player in the past. I get it, there was the Carlson thing, and there was the Stone thing, and there was... All the other things with former Ottawa Senators stars that are no longer on that team. But to me, Claude Giroux trumps them all, you know? Like, I feel like all the standards of money and not wanting to pay guys wouldn't apply here because Claude Giroux is Claude freaking Giroux. Although you can let me know in the comments if this entire thing is just a confabulation within my head and it's not really what the Senators are thinking or what you would want to see happen and said, hey, let me know in the comments, what would you like to see? Would you like to see Claude Giroux go to Ottawa? I personally feel like if he does see the value in going to his hometown favorite team, then sure especially if he wins a Stanley Cup. If Claude Giroux goes out there and he wins Lord Stanley's Grail again, the entire scenario, oh, Thornton to Giroux, the cup right there. Fantastic, right? If that does happen, I'd honestly be pulling for the Ottawa Senators to get Claude Giroux, mostly because if there is a hometown connection, I feel like he wouldn't really be upset with that kind of move, and also because I don't really know if the Ottawa Senators are good enough to start declaring themselves as no longer seller material and starting to contend in all this stuff like Pierre Dorian said they would. And ultimately, I think that signing a Claude Giroux to a big money contract deal could be a similar sort of transaction like Seth Jones in Chicago, for example, where the team is so clearly just not good enough, but you sign a guy to a huge money contract anyway. In fact, why not do that? Why don't the Ottawa Senators go out there and they shell out like a fifth round pick at the draft to the Florida Panthers for the rights to negotiate with Claude Giroux? Then I think they can get eight years, right? Claude right now, if you take a look at how old he is, I mean, he's 34 years old. Sign the guy till he's 42, just for the heck of it and because Ottawa is Ottawa. I'm a fan of pandemonium. I've said that in several videos already. You can let me know in the comments all your thoughts about Claude Giroux, the Ottawa Senators, whether or not you think he should, would, or could sign there in the offseason, and whether or not you think this aligns with what the Ottawa Senators should be doing, because I think there are a lot of things that you could say the Sens have not really done their due diligence on in terms of draft picks and trade decisions, development decisions, you know, stuff that they've done. It's been very strange over the past little bit here, and Pierre Dorian is the mastermind behind it all. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this British Troll 9 and bye.